Hello, everyone. Um, I'm so glad you're here. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being part of the community. Um, this is a general reading for Monday. So let me put that out there right, right off the top. So um, general reading for Monday. My name is Holly. I'm an energy reader, uh, just old-fashioned psychic medium. Today, emphasis on the old because <laughs> I'm kind of dragging. So I wanted to tune in and, oh, got a little baby kitty cat coming back in. It's like she knows when I just start reading. Um, you want to come up? Come on. So um, I wanted to, I, if, you've, if you've watched even one video, you know I like to tune in to the initial vibe for the day. And when I ask Spirit to help give me a word, a message, something, some clarity revolving what will be the energy for, for today, which is going to be Monday, when you see this, possibly, I don't know when you're going to see it, I don't know when you'll see it, but it's, um, I'm making it for Monday. So, um, anyway, so... I asked for a vibe. I asked for the energy and what everyone in the collective should keep in mind, okay? And clear as a bell, the word I heard was patience. Okay, um, I have never been one to understand patience, to get patience. It is a struggle. It is a struggle. I gotta say it again. It's a struggle for me with patience. It really is. Hello, baby girl. And um, so I thought, okay, need a little more help with that. <laughs> and when I was looking for my mug, because I didn't make uh, tea this time, I know, I know, get back to coffee tomorrow. Um, this one. Just, it's the only one I've got like this. It's not part of any set or anything like that. It's, um... But just the simple, I love the design, I love a pedestal mug, but the roses. And it's, um, what I heard and, and what I was feeling was this message of, you gotta be kidding me. So now they're giving me, the, as an extenuation of that, which I guess I need to tell you what I was hearing and feeling was that there are seasons and everything has its season and just because roses may not be blooming where I live right now doesn't mean they won't um there is a oh, now I'm hearing that song what was it Simon and Garf somebody will tell me help me out y'all you know I think it was Simon and Garfunkel to every season turn 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 there is a you know all of that so it's it's an old one if you if yeah it's an older song um time to reap a time to sow a time to whatever else there is to do <laughs> okay <laughs> anyway all right so but be patient was the message just patience and that that song that i haven't thought of in <laughs> a really long time so cheers Mm. That is a very soothing tea as well. I think it's a chamomile something. Isn't that right? Isn't that right? Okay, now let's get a general message. I am very drawn to this deck. Um, the Healing Spirits Oracle by Gordon Smith. The Healing Hand. It's so funny when I do that because it makes... Just because of the angles, it makes my it makes my hand look like it's bigger than my head. <laughs> I, I find that amusing. Um, okay, so we have to amuse ourselves, right? What is this card? Because something said to look at it. Carry the torch for others to see. Wake up the world. It almost looks like kind of the a palm and three instead of four fingers, and that would be the thumb. Anyway, um, yeah. Sometimes, have you ever noticed when sometimes you're not quite at 100% but somebody else comes in and their energy just picks you up and it's not like you're being an energy vampire and, you know, bleeding and dry or anything like that, but it's, and they're saying take this one off the top, okay, um, put it there, don't know what it is, we're, we're going to do another one though as well, um, but when they come in, whomever it is comes in 
And it's like they're having such a good day and they have so much energy to spare. Sorry, baby. Um, they help remind you of your own well strength. Okay. Um, all right. Well, I guess I'm flipping these over. There's two. There are two. All right. And they want me to put them right like that. And this was the first one, but they still want it to be last. The, the first one that they said take that one and flipped over. These cards, I mean, they are. You can really tell this guy's a medium. <laughs> um, all right. So be like your spirit guide. Now look at that. This this is a this is a being that is flying on the wings of of a it reminds me of uh, parachuting, which I've never done and I don't have any desire really to do. Um, but um, from what I've seen in movies and uh, have I watched a documentary about it? Probably not. But I think there is the, you have the opportunity if you don't want to dive on, or maybe you're the first time you've, you've been skydiving, some, you will base somebody with the uh, parachute attached to his or her back will basically hug on to the, your back. And um, pretty much that's what that reminds me of. Someone's always got your back. Someone, even if you're flying on the back of someone else, sometimes it's okay to just rest. And I think that's the message that goes along with the, the initial vibe, too. And I know I am so disjointed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's okay when you need to pull your energy back and coast. And there we go. That's, I just got the validation for that. Thank you, Spirit. All right, so if you feel like you are in a, in a coasting kind of mode, you are still still doing the work. You are still putting yourself out there. People are still picking up what they need from you in terms of a word, a thought, a message, something. Woo. All right. And the energy starting to come in through again. So thank you. I just had to get to the message. If you need to coast, it's okay because you have wings of your own and you'll be flying soon enough. Okay. Maybe they're just showing you the way. All right. And the next card. Heal the past, fix tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> it's like a saying I always used to tell people, particularly young people, and they'd, you know, be like, oh, man, I don't want to be here. I don't want to do this. Da, da, da. I'm like, look, oh, we've just got to get to it and get through it, okay? One foot in front of the other. Get to it, get through it, and then you'll be finished. So... <laughs> That's what that reminds me of. Okay. Heal the past and fix tomorrow. What that means. Because I was talking about forward motion. But you know what? This, this is true. Forward motion means if you, one, if you keep looking behind you, you're continually pulled to the past. But that's not exactly what this is talking about. What this means is that you can go back and rewrite your history should you so choose. Now, that doesn't mean you... Pretend like the past didn't happen, but you can go in through meditation if you know how to do certain types of, you know, like active meditation, which is considered journeying work. Um, you can do, uh, you, you can ask other people to do it for you, but I don't think it's as powerful at all. I think this is something that if you can start getting into a meditative habit to train your mind to focus, then you can do this just like an energy retrieval. You call your pieces back to you and it's so much stronger, so much more powerful. Now, I'm not talking about not ask guides and guardians and for spirit help. I'm talking about those of us in the human realm, okay? And sometimes we do need a little help. I'm not saying don't ask for it and don't get it, but just understand, ask for spirit help and look within to your own spirit to help you as well. That is the best message I could give you, at, you know, period, the end. But when we go back in time, this is a psychological concept or a, con a concept in psychology as well. Sometimes therapists will have clients go back and rewrite their story or in the, you know, as a child, look at someone who was an a, a abuser or just a bully or whomever, not just, but, you know, a bully or whomever. It, it doesn't have to be a, a massively trauma-inducing situation, you know, start really small, but uh, with somebody who just, Pissed, uh, annoyed you, sorry, somebody who really annoyed you, you know, just um, 
focus on those kinds of things and rewrite it very calmly in a collected state, if at all possible. But in, it's your meditation. You do what you want. It's general reading. But, you know, if you want to get loud, that's okay. Um, but it, it can help to rewire the brain so that instead of always feeling like the victim in a situation, you heal that little part of you that was, or the big part of you, whatever part of you, I was thinking like the little kid you, but with, when you go back to the past to fix a situation, you are going back saying and doing the things that you would like to have been able to say or do at that time. Okay. And I can promise you that that is not unheard. It is not unheard by the universe. It is not an unheard by your internal little child self. It is not unheard energetically on the waves by whomever did whatever, even if they've moved on, particularly if they've moved on, they heard it. The higher self of the person who did or group of people who did whatever, they will feel and hear it and they will communicate in whatever way possible if the person in the human form is even capable of absorbing that information. Um, I, I hope that makes sense. I know I started to go down a kind of trippy rabbit hole. But that's like when people write a letter to um, an ex or someone writes a letter to whomever. But then they don't send it. They just burn it or they throw it away or they seal it in an envelope and rip it up or something like that and release the energy that way. Basically, that has an impact psychologically and energetically on you and it releases them. Now, if some of you are saying, I don't want to release somebody, they should suffer. Well, that's, I mean, I, I feel you, man, I get it. But that's not our role or our place, okay? What it will do is it releases them to go do their own work and take accountability. Sometimes people who do bad things want to grab on, hold on, feel like they're still hurting you because it makes them feel more secure. I know that's just messed up, but it, that's the reality of things. For not all, but for some. And so by letting them go, they will feel when they can't get to you any longer, you know? So anyway, I hope that all makes sense. Well, this deck is, has been interesting, hasn't it? Okay, here's the last one for the Gordon Smith deck. Uh, I keep wanting to say Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> I'm not even hungry. Why am I saying that? All right, Gordon Smith, the medium. All right, you are on the right path. Well, thank you for the validation spirit. I just thought it sounded like I was talking in circles. But for the collective, look at that. It's it's like doing the, the leaping into spirits' arms. Look how many spirits there are moving into. You know, from a distance, that also looks like an egg being fertilized. I, mean, I don't mean for this to be like science class or anything. But, um, yeah. So, creation. Maybe this is also... Thank you, spirit. I'm on a roll today. Um, <laughs> um, you are on the right path. So creation. That's what this card means. You are creating your own future, your own reality, and you are doing so by going in and healing your past. Uh, not yet. Okay, we want to end on that. All right, so we're going to go to Energy, Spirit, and Oracle. And you'll never guess who this is by, Sandra Ann Taylor. It seems like I use her deck about, <laughs> or one of her decks, at least once a video, it seems like. All right. Here lately, I've kind of been using other ones, but yeah, I, I really like hers. And I'm, I'm not making light of it. She's put a lot of energy and time in it. And this is probably one of my favorite images. That is just gorgeous. This whole deck is beautiful. All of the decks are beautiful. Okay. This one said take the one off the top. Oh. Hands are getting so dry, no matter how much lotion I use. Uh, peaceful presence, quiet mind. It's card number one, mindfulness. What was it just talking about? An active meditation sometimes is uh, considered journeying, or you can do a walking meditation. But mindfulness is the art of 
letting go of intrusive thoughts. I'm not good at that. Um, but I am really good at the other stuff. So you do what works for you. And, you, and don't let anybody guilt you about, you know, oh, well, you, sh you have to meditate this way. No, you, you, you do what's right for you. A lot of people will walk a labyrinth. That is a, a lot of people will do yoga, martial arts, uh, running or jogging on a treadmill even, you know, and, or, you know, uh, communicating with the wind, you know, if they're outside when they're jogging or walking or just moving and rocking from side to side, you know, whatever it is you can do. Moving meditations or uh, active meditation in the form of astral travel, all of those are valid forms, okay? You, it's, it's all about the intention you set. And even with mindfulness, where you're trying to clear your mind of all thoughts, you are actually setting an intention that you are not going to let intrusive thoughts come into your mind. So anyway, as far as I'm concerned, that's my take on it. But it, uh, the number one on that card, I feel like, is the most important part of it. Well, not, but it's one of the most important parts. It is that, yes, we are getting ready to step into a new beginning. We have completed a cycle. And I can finally say that. We have completed a cycle. We are, we are not beginning. We are at the beginning of, but we are truly beginning the new cycle of whatever is going on i know we've moved into a whole new age um and like we've moved into a 20-year cycle that you know uh, some of us may never come out <laughs> see the end of because you know we're getting old um hmm but it's more than that. It's more than the astrology or astronomy or w whichever part of it you look at. It's about, this new cycle is about, and I'm hearing this very clearly, not accepting less, not accepting less in your life. If there are people who are the con artists, oh, this is huge. If there are people that are the con artists and the scammers and the blowhards, they're going to be outed in, in a big, extreme way and really fast. Six to eight months. Yeah, it's going to look very different. Um, um, or it's 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 all gonna hit the fan. Some something's definitely hitting the fan. Yeah, in a couple of years from now, it will look even more different than in the six to eight month mark. So I don't know. It's it's too far in advance to really look at right now. We all have free will and things can change, but I do feel like we're that's that's the era we are moving into, or not moving, that we have just started. So it's time to say what you mean and mean what you say. There's no more faking it. Fake it till you make it work for a while because we had to. Now it's just you are who you are. And that's nice. All right, the next card that I pulled that... Uh, was kind of leaping up at me from the energy and spirit oracle is card 24 and that's balance and that's what we're moving into with this new cycle we are going to find our center of gravity and we are going to find our balance we are going to find imagine like if you finding your center of gravity is important because that's when we become aware that we are connected to our higher selves, but yet we are rooted and grounded at the same time. And our center of gravity is what holds us in place so that we don't go flying and spinning off. I hope that, man, I... It, it makes sense in my head when I say it. I hope it makes sense beneath the surface. Yeah. All that that was down there is pretty soon 
It's going to be like that. All right. Um, so, yeah, it's making sense in my head when I say it. So I hope it makes sense when you hear it. And if it doesn't make sense to you right now, hopefully it will soon. This is a general reading. Kind of a weird one for Monday, but hey, that's okay. Need a little sip of my tea here. Hold on. Mm. Oh, this was just what I needed. Mm. All right, so I only want one spirit from Inner Child Oracle. This is a really thoughtful, beautiful deck as well. All right. One, please. What is the message for the collective? Spirit guides and guardians, beloved elementals, mother, father, God, archangels. Higher selves. What is the message? For oh, this one just turned sideways and jumped up. Um, very, very, very clearly so. Card 32. So five, add it together, five, and yeah, change is coming. All right, set boundaries. Claim your power and know your value today. We were just talking about that, not settling for less. <laughs> Leaving the darkness and walking into that brilliant Aurora Borealis. Set boundaries. Know your know who you are. Know your value to this world. Know what you're willing to give. It's not just about taking. It's never just about taking. It's also about giving. It's about understanding. Sometimes I see some of the most selfish, self-centered behavior. And that just sets me off in a big way. And so it's not selfish to set boundaries and have an expectation. But it is selfish to say, well, I deserve everything and I'm not giving you anything. Hold on. You know, we are... And I'm not talking to you all about each other in this community, because I mean, but in the world as a whole, we are a community. Yeah. Things are getting ready to change big time. All right. One more card. I know I haven't done an actual, like, I always call them the he said, she said readings. <laughs> That's what it just what it seems like to me. Oh, I may not have called them that with you all, but... Sometimes, I mean, they're important and they're big. Sometimes they're about lawsuits. Some, oops, I'm sorry, baby. Oh, Meredith, I'm sorry. But it's a good thing that box was empty. I didn't hurt you, did I? Oh, and then I shocked her nose when I tried to have the box bumped her in the head. Sorry, baby. All right. Ancestral Path. Big giant, big giant deck. So this is the one that, um, I just kind of do this way, hand over hand. So, yeah, I haven't, okay. And let me do this one. Let me do that one. And that. All right. You got it. Um, one more. I'm getting that there's one more we need here. Hold on. Yeah. They go this way. And these are like putting little books down. Um, this one right there. Okay. So now. Oh, yeah. So, um, I forgot what I was saying. I got so sidetracked. I'm sorry, you all. I am a little, I'm just kind of struggling today. I'm tired. Um, there she is. You weren't hurt. Mm. Okay. So we have the Seven of Staves. Here they use staves, sacred circles, and cups. Well, cups are cups. Uh, but sacred circles are coins. Uh, you can see them as either coins, pentacles, shields. You know, it's like a protective thing. Very earthy. 
Staves are, um, uh, not swords, staves are, um, I'm pretending I'm stick fighting. <laughs> staves are, um, good Lord, come on, wands, thank you. Oh my God, I think I do need to wrap up in a minute. All right, so we have the seven of wands or seven of staves. Um, okay, I know this is using... Egyptian imagery. <laughs> this is so <laughs> going to reflect um, my uh, era of watching movies um, as a younger person. What I saw in this was I saw the movie, uh, and I know somebody else probably has too, and you'll say, oh, I did too, and I'm, I so hope so. Even though it's Egyptian in the card, what I saw was um, Big Trouble in Little China, the movie. <laughs> I love that movie. Anyway, Big Trouble in Little China. And it's um, the, um, I mean, it's so dated and there are so many stereotypes in it that are horrible, but some of them, but it's also just really funny. And uh, anyway, but it reminds me of the, um, it's, I'm not going to call it a wedding scene because it wasn't anything personal. It was just the, uh, the, the coming together that had to happen with the, the green eyed person. And there were two of them. So if you've never watched it, you can rent it anywhere. I mean, it's, it's pretty, pretty funny, but, um, if you can get through the swagger and the fawning, it's just, it's ridiculous. It's so dated, but anyway, um, but that's what it reminds me of. So I'm asking spirit after I stop laughing at that. So why am I seeing Big Trouble in Little China, the movie, when I look at this card? Is that the whole message, really? Okay. I thought there'd be something a little deeper. It's just you are exceptional. If you watch it or you remember it, you'll remember how rare and exceptional the the one, well, actually, the, the, the two women were because of what they possessed um, as a characteristic of themselves. So, um, don't underestimate yourself. It goes back to that setting boundaries, but don't underestimate yourself. You are... You have so much more to offer than you realize. You are truly exceptional. We all have very individual souls. We all have perfect souls. We are all exceptional. But they're saying that someone needs to hear this, that they're, they're, you are extra special. There's something different about you. Because what you really have, the shadow of this person is so much longer and bigger than what the individual is, and she's standing in front of, of this light. So it's, it's a beautiful card, actually. And instead of all of this being threatening on the sides, it feels, at first I was like, whoa, kind of got to walk the gauntlet there. No. They're actually protective. Then we have the king of sacred circles. And talk about some stereotypes, man. They got across the board here. These cards have so many stereotypes in them, but they're that's a they're pretty cards. That's it's cool. We get it. Um, and he's sporting a big old stash. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, the king of sacred circles. So that's the, the king of pentacles or the king of coins. Very grounded. Very grounded to the earth. And he controls the weather. You see that lightning bolt in the background? He's able, he has, um, there's something about supernatural knowledge as well. With this person and the and the bringing in and calling in the light, this person who controls 
lightning strikes and controls light that way. And it's not about being in control, but it's about being a part of. And when you realize you're a part of all of this, it's a seamless flow of energy and it's a seamless way of connecting with everything that is. Very often we have to be careful with some of our strong emotions or we will affect what happens with the weather. So um, if you never notice that, you may want to notice and pay attention to that. Okay, then we have the Four of Cups and this is more Arthurian looking or European, I guess. But not even Renaissance, maybe early Renaissance. Um, but he doesn't notice that he has four. He's just looking at that one. But the others aren't upside down or spilled or anything like in the five. So, Spirit, what are we supposed to know about that? And why is it here with all this supernatural spiritual knowledge? Oh, it's never enough. No matter how much you have, it's never enough. So how do we wrap all this together? Because the last card is the three of staves, which is the three of wands. She's holding up an onk. We began and ended uh, in Egypt, according to these cards. But she is holding up an Ankh, so eternal life. The ship in the background, are they leaving? Are they embarking on a journey? Or are they disembarking at their final location? Not final, but why did I say final? It's not final if it's never ending. I don't know, you all. Um, look at that poor guy back here. My word. Well, look at him. Look at that. I just not this poor guy, he's you know, looking on like I'm doing all the work. <laughs> you know? That poor old guy back there. Oh. Isn't that it? Somebody's always the one left holding the bag and having to do all the work. Um They're coming in. They're not disembarking. They're they're actually or they are disembarking. They're not embarking on the journey. They are exiting. They're disembarking. And they are moving into a new way and a new land. A new way of doing things. Which can be a little scary, but it's okay. So whereas this person is sitting thinking it's never enough and the lack. They're thinking... We have a whole new kingdom, a whole new place to, to step into. All right, so Spirit, what is it that this, what, what is the underlying message of this reading? It feels like two totally separate readings. Okay, so here's, here's the bottom line. Man, so much for being short. It was long. Okay. This is in the realm of spirit and the head. Staying in the head, but in the in the realms of spirit. Sometimes you gotta bring yourself down to the ground a little bit. Sometimes you have to realize if you want your cup to be full, if you want your heart to be full, you have to be willing to to go on that journey. You have to be willing to swim in those waters. You have to be willing to get your feet wet. You have to be willing to step into the real world, step into reality. Someone can hold all the power of light and shadow and weather and the ethereal but unless they are willing to step into the real world and do something with it, it is all theory. You 
you don't meet many philosophers this this in this day and age, do you? People who spend their lives, make careers out of writing books of philosophy. Now that might be what is now called an influencer, but that's more product and consumerism based, I believe. Uh, you have people who are more in the self-help realm. But the day and age of, you know, are we really dreaming? Or is it a dream within a dream? Is what we're experiencing now a dream? Or is it that kind of philosophy? Don't really. People are hungry. People need a place to live. It's good to think about that kind of thing, and that is sort of that esoteric knowledge at the beginning. But in the end, sometimes you just have to get your feet wet and jump in the pool and start swimming, or the pond, or the lake, or whatever. If you want to experience life more than likely, you're going to have to start doing instead of thinking about it. And that can be incredibly scary and hard. And I'm not advocating that if you're not ready for that. This is a general reading, so you do what is best for you. And just like at the beginning, and the it's, it's interesting, the beginning and the end of this, start it with, if you need to coast for a while, coast until you get your bearings and you know where you are. That is completely acceptable and understandable and healthy. By the end of this reading, it's like when you're ready, that water's not going anywhere. You can get your feet wet in it when you can get on that boat and sail across it whenever you're ready, when you're ready. All right, I think that's it. Took me a little bit to get here, didn't it? All right. Thank you, everyone, for being here. I'm sending you love and gratitude. Um, so let's just be hopeful, be patient with ourselves as much as anything on this Monday. And I'm wishing you all well. Thank you so much for being here. I'm still here. No, <laughs> my little clicker thing didn't work. <laughs> All right, let's try that again. <laughs>